This webinar is on the indirect cost components in the project management and accounting module. My name is Rob Fitzpatrick. I'm a senior AXD365 solution architect with Western Computer. And what we're going to talk about today is how to essentially set up and use the indirect cost components that are in the system to mark up your labor costs, charge to your projects, and also give you the opportunity to create additional revenue and billings off of these components in the system. And the agenda, we're going to go through the entire setup of all the indirect costs. So there's a pretty extensive setup before you get to use it. I'll show you the example we're going to run through, how the math will work, because there are some options with regards to how you can calculate these components. And I'll walk you through the demo of that. So first things first, what can the indirect cost components do? First thing they can do is burden your project labor. Essentially, so you have a direct cost if an employee's salary equates to $25 an hour. You can burden the project labor to include their fringe benefits and an overhead component so that the cost that you're charging your projects is reflective of the actual cost that this employee is costing the company, not just their salary, but the cost of their fringe benefits and the insurance, et cetera, and overhead, the cost of actually running your business you can distribute as a component of your hourly cost. So that's one of the biggest ways I've seen it. You can have cost plus projects where there is a markup on your direct labor for a billing purpose. You can also charge, let's say, communication fees. So if you are in an industry where you're providing lots of printing and shipping and other admin costs, maybe an architectural firm that does a lot of the printing and the shipping of drawings and things like that back and forth, instead of actually charging for the actual printing and the shipping involved, charge a communication fee that will, based on the labor of the project, cover those admin costs so you don't have to get into the tedious nature of figuring out how many times you printed paper for a particular project and track down all the shipping labels for any particular project. So another way to employ these indirect costs. And a note is that the indirect costs are only applicable to hours transactions in the system. So they will calculate and add costs, invoicing revenue amounts based on the hours transactions in the system. So just an overview of what we need to set up. First and foremost, you have dedicated project categories for your indirect cost components. Those categories get assigned to the indirect cost components themselves. Those indirect cost components are then combined into an indirect cost component group. And then once you have a group of components, that group is assigned to your project. And there's some flexibility in how those groups can be assigned, and we'll look at that. So first and foremost, the indirect cost components require a dedicated project category. And what makes it a dedicated project category is marking that indirect cost component set up on the project category. So once that is triggered and that's yes, I just set to yes, that category can only be used in the indirect cost component area. You won't see this project category anywhere else in the system. So you won't see it when you charge labor to a project, but it'll be hidden once that setting is set to yes. Next, you're going to link this project category to a indirect cost component. So this is a one-to-one -one link between your category and your component. So it knows where to record transactions to. And then you have your indirect cost component groups, which can combine one or more indirect cost components into a group. And this will define how the calculation can work. So the indirect cost components can affect three different areas in the system, your cost, your revenue, and or your invoice, meaning that you can increase your cost charge to the project, you can accrue revenue in the system based on these components, and then you can create additional amounts to invoice based on these components. They can be applied as a percentage of the underlying amount or as a unit rate on top of the underlying amount. And in the costs of the calculation, you can actually compound one on top of the other if multiple indirect cost components are used. So I'll show you an example of the compounding in the system as well. And then we have the ability here. This is where the indirect cost component groups are assigned to your projects. There is flexibility here, so you can assign them based on the customer account, your project contract, your project ID, categories and resources are also available to be used. So some flexibility in how these indirect cost component groups are assigned in the system. And then here's the math. This will be the example that I'm walking through today. And we'll walk through all three types of indirect cost components and then the calculations. So I've got a base eight hours of time where my cost price is $25 per hour and my sales price is $75 an hour. So my direct cost to the project is eight hours times $25. That's $200.
and then my revenue and my invoicing amount to the client, that's going to be the 8 times 75, which is $600. So the first thing I'm going to do on the cost side, I'm going to say, okay, we have a fringe allocation of 30% of my direct cost, which the system will calculate as $60. And then we'll have a subtotal there of $260. Obviously, there's no revenue or invoicing impact on this. We're only looking at cost right now. Then we're going to add another 110% for overhead on top of direct cost plus fringe. So this is the compounding I was talking about. So instead of just taking 110% of that $200, I'm going to take 110% of that $260. So I can compound the rates one on top of another. And that total is going to be $286. And I'm going to get down to a subtotal of $546 on the cost side. And the last component I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, we're going to charge a communication fee. It's going to be a 2% of cost and then 4% for revenue and invoicing. That's how much revenue and invoice additional amount we want to add to our invoicing. So I'll take that 2% and I'm only going to apply it to my direct cost. I won't worry about adding that 2% to fringe and overhead. So it's a base 2% based on your direct cost. So it'll be $4. And then my revenue and invoicing, I'll do 4% based on that amount as well. And so when I go through the example, we'll look to match up to these numbers. Okay, so let's talk and go through the setup of this. So the first thing I needed were some project categories. And even before that, I need some shared categories. So I'm going to create I'll create fringe benefits. I will create overhead and I will create some communication fee okay now I can create my project categories I'll bring them into the system so there's fringe Remember, this is the big thing you need to remember. You need to mark it as an indirect cost component. I'll choose indirect as my category group here. So one thing you should note is that when you're setting up these indirect costs, you notice that you are setting up a category group. And what you can do at the category group level is obviously set up ledger posting differently for these indirect cost components than your direct labor costs and your actual revenue accounts. You could direct these indirect costs and additional revenue to their own set of accounts. Okay. So my categories are set up, and then I'll set up my components. So this is the one to one link between a cost component and your project category. So there's the category. Let me set up. I think I call that. Whoop. I call that OH. Okay. So again, the link between our cost component and our category. Next step is going to be creating our cost component group. So I'll name it demo. And we're going to assign our indirect cost components here. So one thing to note, these are all date effective rates, which is great. So for instance, if I'm setting up this fringe and overhead allocation, I could get that from the finance department. You know, This year, we should be using these percentages as our fringe and overhead allocations. If it changes next year, you just add a new record into this form, date effective with the new year, and then the new rates can get picked up. So very useful on that side of things. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is our fringe benefits. It'll be 30% of our cost rate. We're not going to bill or recognize any revenue for fringe. So I'll save that. So once you save that, you'll notice that the compounding rules are this little drop down is active. And this is where you set up the rules for each type of indirect cost here. 
So cost, revenue, or invoice, we're only dealing with cost. And I only have the base amount of my transaction to deal with right now. So I'm going to push that over to the other side to say, I want my fringe calculation to be based on the base amount only. So now I'll take, I think I'm going to put here, do the overhead next. I want that as 110%. Now, when I take a look at those compounding rules for cost, I have the ability now. I see my base amount and I see the fringe amount. I want to base it on both. So this is how I can compound the 110% on top of the base and the fringe amount. And then lastly, we have the communication fee. Now, I want this to be a 2% for cost, 4% for revenue, and a 4% for sales. So on the cost side, I just want it to be based on the base amount. I'm not going to charge communication fee on fringe or overhead. For revenue, same thing. I just want it based on the base amount. And for invoicing, same thing. Just want it based on the base amount. And one of the nicer items you have with regards to the indirect cost components, you have this model rates button, which is pretty nice. So when I hit this and I give it the information that I want to model, so my example, I had eight hours at $25 cost and $75 for revenue and invoicing. And I want to calculate that. This model rates will actually show you what's going to get calculated for each indirect cost component here. So it's going to tell me basically based on the eight hours and $25 in cost, I'm going to add $4 in comp fee to that transaction, $60 in fringe and $286 on that transaction. And you can see based on the slide, this is exactly how I envision this thing working. So the 30% based on direct cost is going to give me the 260 and then 110% on top of that 260 is another 286 and then adding that $4. So when I charge this transaction to the project, I should see $550 in cost and then $624 in revenue with an invoicing amount of $624 as well. So that model rates is letting me know that everything looks like it's calculating hunky-dory. And then What I will do first, though, is create my project. So I'll assign it. Oh, I didn't want that. Let's go to my projects. Create a new project. So I'm going to accrue whip on my project. Let me set up my contract here. Okay, I'll create my project. I'll make sure it's in process so that I can transact on it. And the last thing from an indirect cost component standpoint is make my assignment. So I will come out here and for my project, which is the last one in the list here, I'm going to assign it my demo group. Okay. So the setup is complete. I'm going to head out to my project and I'll put an hours transaction. Uh, if I choose the, my right project, I'll do that. There we go. I'll choose my project, create an hours transaction. So it'll be for me for eight hours. And the cost price is 25, sales price is 75. So this should follow along with the example. I'll post that transaction. And now let's take a look on my project for that transaction. So here's my transaction. Let's take a look. And here is what posted for my indirect costs. So based on those eight hours, it added $350 of indirect costs for a total of $550.
and on the cost side, and then on the sales side, you'll see that it added the $24 for a total of $624 on the sales side. And oh, look, yep, look at that. Woohoo! So we've got the, the same math working out. So this is just a breakdown of, of what we did. Now, in the system, if you want to see this breakdown, when you take a look at the voucher, you can see, first off, you can see what's happening. I made reference to this earlier. So let's say here are the two revenue transactions right now, both going to the same account. But as I mentioned before, I could accrue this revenue to a different account. So you can see how all the indirect cost components are split on the voucher. So I can route this accrued revenue to a different accrued revenue account so I can analyze, hey, here's how much I have in communication fee as far as accrued revenue goes. And cost, same thing. I can have my direct labor going to one account and then I can set up ledger posting so that each indirect cost can go to its own cost account in the ledger for analyzing. Obviously, this all went to the same account, but it does not have to be that way. When you're on your transaction and you take a look at the ledger updates, you'll also see the same type of split where what accounts everything went to, but you'll also see this button up here, review indirect costs. And when you click that button, this gives you a breakdown of where these indirect costs came from and the calculation involved. So you can see based on each component, how much was added to cost, how much was added to revenue, how much was added to invoicing. So another easy way to identify, you can actually get the details by component by component as to what contributed to that total amount on your project transaction. Okay, so that was pretty much it with the indirect cost components. In summary, just a method to get additional costs, revenue, and invoicing amounts added to your labor costs or labor transactions in the system. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, email us, we could potentially set up another webinar for to answer those questions or put some videos out there on our website. Thank you.